Hey, yo, prepare for the rainbow when it drop, it's a blow up. Yeah. H2O clouds submerged, that's a roll up. That. In the K locked and no on sight when the nest came. Uh -huh. Watching niggas spray, except for words when the nest say. Did what we had to do, full for the sensei. Uh -huh. Full body control, did whatever the sensei. Now our numbers together, shut up like the campaign. Link up with the pops, the dawn, Perry Young. Uh -huh. Yeah, heal it back at the olive tree. Yeah. Two branches unchained like former parolees. Be shy with the word crack in the concrete. Unity means an increase, that's how it should be. That's right, yeah. Blood thick in the water combined. Uh -huh. We could build, call the Lord to heat up the border. Joshua up. 6 united, it's an all out slaughter. Sons of Judah and Eve for more the size of the water. Cause the Bible say, who gonna stand up? Who gonna do it? The black, Hispanics, and Native Americans, the prophets of the Most High. Read the book of Psalms, chapter 94, and verse 16. Uh -huh. Who will rise up for me against you evildoers? You see that? You see what the Bible say? The Bible asking the question, who's gonna rise up for God against the people that's evildoers? Who gonna do it? Because people that's, that's that they got high status in society, they not gonna do it. They got too much to lose. Read that part again from the top. Who will rise up for me against the evil do? The Bible says, who gonna rise up? You gonna rise up, brother? You gonna rise up, brother? Huh? Well, you gotta, y'all brothers gotta repent and come join us. Or get, or get, get with somebody that's, that's keeping these laws. You know what I'm saying? The Bible says, who gonna rise up for God? Read. Or who will stand up for me? Who gonna stand up for this Bible? You ready to stand up, brother? You ready to stand up, brother? Yeah, I got a question. Bro. What you got? A, what you got a question about, brother? Y'all better not act like y'all about to trump over here. Nah, man, we gonna do that, brother. We love you, brother. Okay, I'm having an issue trying to trying to figure out, man, the authenticity and the new. I be rocking with the old, uh -huh. but I'm finding I ain't feeling comfortable in my heart with the new. Maybe with the what? With the new test? Exactly. Why? Because I've read and, and seen so many things that counter, that counter it. You know what I'm saying? We this is like my great grandmother's scripture, right? Uh -huh. We talk about something like the chalice or something, right? And uh -huh. my great grandmother's scripture is completely different. It's been changed like three or four more times. So now. let me so, ask you a question. I don't know. Let me ask you a question. Is that a, is that a new translation, a new Bible? Like, you know, we, we subscribe to the 1611 King James Bible, uh, right? Yeah, now you have the NIVs, yeah. right? You have all these different versions of the Bible. Yeah. And a lot of times when our people be going to those other versions, they get confused. So you got to stick with the 1611 so you won't get confused. Read the book of Hebrews, chapter 10 and verse 7. I'm, I'm bringing out the scripture to show you there's no separation from the new and the old. No separation. Read. Then said I, lo. I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. See that? This is Christ. Christ said he come in the volume of the book. It, the whole entire Bible is written about him. From Genesis to Revelation. You know what I'm saying? The New Testament is just an abbreviation of the old. Think about it. When Christ was walking the earth and teaching, did he have the New Testament? No. No. He was living New Testament. He, no, he was teaching. He was, he, was, he, was, he was coming forth, but he was teaching from the laws of Moses. When Paul was out here teaching, did he have his writings to go off of? No, what he was teaching from? The old writings. You see what I'm saying? It's just an abbreviation of what the old had already said. They ain't saying nothing no different from what the prophet said. Read that again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10 and verse 7. Uh -huh. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. It is written of him. You know what I'm saying? Now give me first Peter's. The book of Second Peter's, chapter one, and verse twenty. Uh -huh. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. See what the Bible say? No prophecy of the scriptures is of any private interpretation. Read. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, uh -huh. but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. See that? The prophet spake as they was moved by the Holy Ghost, by the Spirit of Christ. Because he said he come in the volume of the book. Now give me Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6. 
The prophets were speaking the same things. Nobody was changing nothing because everybody was moving in the same spirit. You got that? Read. Well, the Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6. Uh, for I am the Lord. I change not. See that? He said, for I am the Lord. I change not. If I said thou shalt not kill in the Old Testament, that's what I mean in the New. Read. Go ahead. Uh, this might be simple, right? But this is how it got me into studying more. Uh -huh. And it was on the subject of pork. Pork? Like, now, like, I don't eat pork. Right. I've read Leviticus. Okay? Right. But why is it that when I take it to my aunties, they'll be like, yo, well, it's right here in Leviticus. Uh -huh. But then they say, well, Jesus died for my sins. So I ask her, I say, well, why? Well, since Jesus died for your sins, then now you can eat pork. What says right here in Leviticus, you ain't supposed to eat pork. Right. Because I can just go robbing folks and everything. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Because for my sins. Does that make any sense? No, it don't make any sense. You know what it's called? Christianity. Right. Right. Christianity teaches you to break God's laws. Right. And Paul, Christ, Christ, we just read Christ said, do not think that I come to do away with the law. We just read that, right? So why why do why is they not teaching that it's okay to eat swine? Because they under the spell of Christianity, my brother. Paul and them never taught that to, to break God's commandments. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna give you an example. Give me first Corinthians six and nine. Hey brother, make sure you give us a call now. All right? Okay. First Corinthians six and nine. I'm gonna show you that Paul was teaching the commandments. Read the book of First Corinthians, chapter six and verse nine. Uh, yeah. Know ye not that the unrighteousness, unrighteous, right. know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So Paul is telling Corinth. He said, "Don't you know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God?" Now, let me ask you a question. What does it mean to be righteous? Deuteronomy six twenty five. Following God's commandments. Huh? What you say? We follow God's command. Right? right. Let's read the scripture. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6 and verse 25. Uh -huh. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he hath commanded us. See that? It shall be our righteousness, like you said, that we keep the commandments. Right? So go back to 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Read. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 6 and verse 9. Uh -huh. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So he said, know ye not that the unrighteous, the unrighteous is who? People not keeping the commandments. <laughs> eating pork. Not eating pork is a commandment. Eating pork is a sin. Right? Read. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. Be not deceived. He said, don't be deceived. See, that's what's going on with our people in Christianity. They have been deceived. What? Read. Neither fornicators. So that's going back to Leviticus 18. That's what you that's what you read about the law of fornication. Paul is just abbreviating. He said, neither fornicators, read, nor idolaters. Nor people that's in idol worship. Where do you read about idol worship at first? Give me Exodus 20. He going, he going back to the law, brother. Yeah. Go back to Exodus 20. Verse 1. The book of Come on. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 1. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee. Verse, verse 1. Verse 3. Verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. See that? That's what Paul getting it from. No idolatrous. Paul said, Paul said, no idolatrous. Moses said, you should not have no other gods before me. Read. Go back to 1 Corinthians. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 6 and verse 9. Uh -huh. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, uh -huh. nor idolaters, nor adulterers. Nor adulterers. Where he get that from? The Ten Commandments. Right. <laughs> okay. Right? Read on. Nor effeminate. Nor effeminate. That's dudes walking around here trying to be women. Because that's what was going on in the church of Corinth at that time. Which is going right back into man on man. But that's where they lead to. Right? Read. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Like I said, now they in the full full, full flesh, the LGBTQ, S S T E R, whatever yeah. community now. Read. Drop that. Come on. Right. Nor thieves. Uh -huh. Nor covetous. Nor thieves. Where he get that from? The Old Testament. Yeah. He telling you these these are people that's not going to enter to the kingdom. And we in the New Testament. We in the New Testament. Right on. Right. Read on. No thieves. No covetous. Uh huh. No covetous. That's the last law. 
go give me that. Go, go to Exodus 20. Read it right here. He said, No covet. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, uh -huh. nor his manservant, uh -huh. nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is his neighbor's. You see that? He said, Thou shalt not covet. This is what Moses did. Moses broke it all the way down, which you're not supposed to covet of your neighbors. But look what Paul did. Now go back. Nor extortioners uh -huh. shall inherit the kingdom of God. So go back to covet part. Thou neither thieves, nor covetous. Nor covetous. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, husband. You know what I mean? Read. Yeah. Nor drunkards. Nor drunkards. The Bible says you're not supposed to get drunk. You read about that in Proverbs chapter 20. Let's get that. They're not saying nothing no different. Remember, we read in Peter's, the prophets moved as the Holy Ghost was in them, meaning the Spirit of Christ was moving in them, and it was all speaking the same thing. This is what Christianity don't know. They don't know the Bible. Right. They don't. Read Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Wine is a mocker. Uh -huh. Strong drink is raging. Uh -huh. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. You see that? When you're being a drunkard, you, you're not wise. That's what Paul is pulling these things from. Now go back. Verse 10. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, uh -huh. nor revilers, uh -huh. nor extortioners uh -huh. shall inherit the kingdom of God. No extortioners. That's going into usury. You will not get into the kingdom, right? So now, give me Romans chapter 13. I'm going to show you what Paul was doing. It says in Romans, these are briefly comprehended. Come on, brother. The book of Romans chapter 13 and verse 9. Uh -huh. For this thou shalt not commit adultery. He's saying it again in Romans. Thou shalt not commit adultery is in the Ten Commandments. So why is Christianity teaching we're under grace. We don't have to keep the laws. When I'm reading two scriptures out of his writings, Paul's writing, telling us, right. read that again. Read For out. this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not kill. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not steal. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Read. Thou shalt not covet. Read. And if there be any other commandment. So he said, and if there be any other commandment, meaning the eating of pork, read. It is briefly comprehended. It is what? Briefly comprehended. Said, it is briefly comprehended. Read. In this saying. In these sayings. Paul didn't rewrite the whole entire first five books of Moses. He just briefly comprehended the laws. He expounded on it. You understand, my brother? That's it on that? Read on. Namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Read on. Love working no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Love is the fulfilling of the law. And let me tell you what problem with Christian. Give me 2 Peter 3.15. Bring it up. I will show you the problem with these Christians and grandma and granddad and these pastors when they start reading New Testament. Bring it up. Read. The book of 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15. Uh -huh. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Read. Even as our beloved brother Paul, uh -huh. also according to the wisdom of given unto him, have written unto you. So Paul has written the majority of the New Testament, right? Read. As also in all these, his epistles, speaking in them of things, these things in which some things are hard to be understood. You see what he said? Peter telling us this, because he had to read the letters before Paul was sending them out to the churches, because Peter was a chief apostle. Peter said, listen, Paul's letters are hard to understand. That's right. Yeah, he, you may be reading, you know, slaves obey your master, and you thinking that's what it's really saying. Or he may be bringing out something dealing with pork, but he's not telling you to eat pork. Because they, they be pulling first Timothy 4 to try to justify that. But look what Peter said again. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, uh -huh. even as our beloved brother Paul, uh -huh. also according to the wisdom given unto him, have written unto you. As also in all his epistles, uh -huh. speaking in them of the things in which are some things hard to be understood. You hear that? Peter told us, he said, Paul's letters are going to be hard to understand. Read. Which they that are unlearned. Those Christians in the Christian church are unlearned. They unlearn. Peter said those that are unlearned, that don't know the Old Testament. That's the point. You don't know the Old Testament. Read. And unstable, uh -huh. rest. You rest. You wrestle with the scriptures. 
Now you said, oh, the Old Testament sick. Like you said, don't it say in Leviticus 11, not to eat pork? Well, we under Christ now. Now you're wrestling with the scriptures. Right. Because the prophet's not saying nothing different. Everybody's speaking the same things. Read. As they do also the other scriptures uh -huh. unto their own destruction. You hear that part? It said they do that unto their own destruction. That's why, that's why we advise people, if you don't have a good hold or a good understanding on the Old Testament, you better stay out of Paul's letters. Right. Because you're going to be thinking, oh, I'm under grace and mercy. I don't have to keep no commandments. That's what you're going to fall under. Christianity. You see that, my brother? Oh, I got it. <laughs> so yeah. we have to keep the laws and the faith of Christ right. so we can get the kingdom. And I see you got your beard on. All praise to the most high. You know what you got to get next? You got to get your fringes on. You got to get your fringes on. Also, give us a number on the back of the flyer and come visit the school laws with them. You know what I mean? Come visit the school so we can build you up so you come out and teach your people. What's your name again, bro? Daryl, it was good to meet you, Daryl. And I hope and I hope and pray that you got a little bit of better understanding. Yeah. So now, what you need to do now, keep doing some research and give us a call. You know what I mean? So we can so we can get the kid. But Christ said, he said something. He said the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray for more laborers. Right. Give me Exodus 15 to 3 before you leave. I want to show you something. The book of Exodus, chapter 15 and verse 3. The Lord is a man of war. Hey, my brothers. Hey, my brothers. My brothers. I want y'all to listen to the scripture right here. 15 and verse 3. The Lord is a man of war. Hey, brother. The Bible say the Lord is a man of war. Because when he come back, it's war time. That's right. It's going down. Now, you heard the scriptures we bring out about that destruction. Yeah. It's going to be war time. That's why I said the Lord is a man of war. Lamb the first time yeah, he coming back. He coming back as a god. Lion. Yeah, he coming back to destroy, judge, and make war. That's why we ain't got no time to play around, brother. We used to scream "Black Power" while Heron was pushed, but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth.